So there have been lots of little niggly questions and issues on running Vectric Aspire version 12 on various Mac VMs and Mac configurations. So I just wanted to go through a couple of things here. Firstly, after I posted my video last week on running uh, vCarve Pro and Aspire V12 on Macs, I personally have not had any problems and I have updated to uh, new releases of the software from Vectric as they come out. And if you go back and take a look at that video, you'll see that I'm actually running on a 2019 series iMac running an Intel processor, not an extremely powerful machine at all. On that machine, I run VMware Fusion with the latest Windows Pro on it. And other than, yeah, performance is a little bit laggard on that machine, it runs perfectly fine. The machine that I'm doing the demo here is my go-to machine. And it is a MacBook Air, last year's midsummer release with an M2 processor, 16 gigabytes of physical memory. But we're going to walk through all of that. And I run parallels on this machine. And I have to say, I was a longtime VMware Fusion fan and updated it religiously as new versions came out. But I decided to try parallels, the demo, just because I've been hearing good things about it. And it seemed like Fusion was just not keeping up to date. And then the biggie for me was when the Apple Silicon series of machines started taking hold. Parallels had a deal with Microsoft to allow running the Windows ARM release on Parallels legally. And that was a big thing to me. I always keep legal versions of my software. So I did try out Parallels. And I have to say, I haven't really looked back. I keep Fusion on my Intel Mac machine, primarily because I really don't use that machine to do any design work or to generate G-code. My number one is this MacBook Air running the M2 processor. And then I also have a very beefy Windows desktop machine with a high-end GPU that I used uh, for CAD software development. It's got 64 gigabytes of memory in it and hard disk out the wazoo. But it is about six years old and compared to this MacBook Air, it it's a little bit of a dog. So I run the MacBook Air, even though it's running through a, a VM and running Windows on top of a Mac OS. It is so much better, so much faster. So all that said, I'm not here to argue what the right thing to do is. Everyone has to do you know, what's best for their situation. I did want to go through and just talk about configuration of parallels and uh, Windows versions and Mac OS versions. So first of all, well, let's start at the base and work our way up. Vectric had released version 12.003 of their software last week, and that was a release that folks like me were able to download and install. It was the release that I did my running Vectric software on Mac OS last week, and it had been performing and working very well on both of my Macs, as I, I just previously outlined. Then a couple of days later, they released a 12.04 release with a couple of minor fixes. There were some reports on the Vectric forum that there were some issues with running it on Parallels on Mac OS. So wanting to see what was up with that, I went ahead and installed the 12.04 release on both of my Macs. And again, I was not having those kinds of problems. This morning, I noticed that there was a 12.005 release. And here's the release notes for it. I don't know when this release came out, but it does seem to have some interesting fixes in it, like the fix the 3D view right click menu translation, fix for various DPI related issues. And, you know, running Windows on a VM on a Mac where Macs have high resolution displays, this could actually be an issue for some folks. So I thought that was interesting. And an issue they fixed with rotary relief displayed at low resolution. A fix issue for sketch carving. This is interesting because I've been doing a lot of work on the sketch carving, getting prepared to do a video on that. And intermittent issue editing 2D shapes and forms and fixing various crashes. I love it, fixing various crashes. We don't know if those crashes are any of the ones that have been reported running Aspire software on Mac virtual machines or not, but perhaps they are. So those are released now. So I have installed the 12.005 release and have been testing it for a few hours so far, running it through the paces. And when I say testing, I don't mean just drawing a line or a vector here and there and loading a 3D model and doing a rough and a final pass on it. I'm talking about a fairly rigorous 
exercise of all of the 2D features and all of the 3D features, stuff that requires a lot of processing and memory and um, not had a problem. It isn't a professional test plan, but you know, being a, a professional software developer, I kind of know what knobs to tweak and what buttons to push to really make software struggle. And that's what I do when I test. And if it survives all of that, then I feel it's probably pretty robust. There may still be issues lurking, obviously, but for me, at least in my workflow and what I do, it should be fine. So I've done that with the 12.005 release. Everything is fine. And so I'm going to do this little video, not just to talk about the 12.05 release, but more importantly, to talk about my Parallels configuration and Windows and Mac OS versions. So let's jump right into it. And as you can see here, I have Aspire 12.005 running. I actually have two instances of it. So let's go ahead and kill one of those. And let's take a look at the Windows configuration first. Here is my Windows. I do have a couple of pending updates that need to be installed. I'll probably do those right after I do this video. Cumulative updates. And let's take a look at my update history. Let's take a look at our Windows operating system first. Because I am running on Apple Silicon, an M2 processor, I do need the Windows ARM release of the software. So that's what we're running here. And let's scroll down and look at about. It knows that we're running on Apple Silicon. I have uh, six gigs of installed RAM. That's what I've got affiliated with the virtual machine here. And, and let's see, it's got Windows 11 Pro. I am a big believer in using the Pro version. I don't know exactly what the major differences are with Windows Pro and Windows Home. Microsoft strips out features for the Home version, and some of those features may be required for applications like uh, Vectric Aspire or vCarve Pro. We are running the 23H2 release right now that I installed back in February. You see the OS build 22631.3155. And that's pretty much it for the Windows version. Now let's take a look at Parallels. Here is the Parallels configuration for Windows 11. And I'll just walk through these screens so you can see them. Nothing specific going on here. Let's just walk through all of the options dialogs and let you look at these and discuss any that uh, I think are interesting. Optimization, I do have resource usage set to no limit. If you are having some issues, perhaps you want to check this and increase your resource usage. Sharing, I do mirror Mac and Windows user folders. That way I don't have files scattered around all over Kingdom Come. They're easier for me to find that way. I don't know that that would make any difference, so do what you think is right for you. And then share Windows, same thing. Applications, full screen, picture in picture, web and email, maintenance, travel mode, because it is a laptop, and then more options. Nothing specific here to talk about. Hardware is where the interesting stuff is going to be. So CPU and memory. I do have four CPUs allocated, six gigs of RAM, up to three gigs for graphics. You can't make these changes while you're running a virtual machine. Graphics is going to be important because of 3D rendering. And so I have best for Retina display, which is the high resolution display that the MacBook Airs have. I find that this works extremely well scaled. I've had problems in the past, particularly with Fusion. And best for external displays. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually running on a Dell 38 inch monitor right now. And I do have my laptop hooked up. So I have two displays. So I keep it just best for Retina, and it looks and works fine. This big monitor, really crisp, really clear. It isn't a Retina display, but it's it's quite livable. Mouse and keyboard, nothing I do special there. Shared printers, I don't do anything special there. Network, I don't do anything special. Sound and camera, nothing special. I am recording uh, the screen capture and the audio on this Mac in parallel to actually doing the demo and the screen sharing demo here. So in addition to everything else the computer has to do, it has to keep all of that going as well. USB and Bluetooth. I don't like having my Bluetooth and USB devices connecting to my Windows VM when I install them. Hard disk, you can see I've got a 256 gig SSD actually built in. And um, I have lots and lots of auxiliary hard disk, including a uh, Synology network attached storage device with four terabytes of data storage. So I keep everything backed up. I use Time Machine 
Another advantage of running Aspire and, and Windows software on a VM on a Macintosh is all of that stuff can be backed up on your time machine backups. A very elegant solution that comes free out of the box with Mac OS, and uh, why not take advantage of it? CD, DVDs, I don't even have a CD or a DVD anymore, so not a big issue here. TPM chip, this is a biggie. Uh, trusted platform module, this is hardware that Windows machines and Mac machines have that assure the operating system that this is a legitimate platform. And if you're interested in this, you probably should read this article. If you installed Windows 11 ARM on a Fusion or on a Parallels VM, you probably called having to go through a special path uh, to activate the TPM module on your software. And that's what this is all about. And then boot order, not doing anything special there. Security, you know, I'm not doing anything special here. And then on backup, I already am backing up with my time machines. And that's my parallels configuration. Last thing, let's just check is a parallels version. I am running parallels pro edition version 19.3.0. I haven't checked for updates on this in a couple of weeks. So let's just check. I have the latest, so no big deal there. Okay. So that's that. Now let's jump right into it with Aspire. And here's Aspire 12.0.5, and let's see. So one thing I did notice, and this was only under Fusion and not under Parallels, was that when you have a pop-up note defined, so that when you look, when you open one of your car files, the dialog will pop up and show you the notes. Just as a reminder of you know some information, I use them frequently for describing where the datum is, uh, just to make it easier for me to remember what I was up to when I created the file. And so when this pops up, there's a little OK button that you have to dismiss. What I found was under Fusion, this pop-up doesn't actually show up. It pops up behind the Aspire window, and it seems like Aspire or vCarve Pro both were locked up. And I kind of were, was perplexed by that. You know, I rebooted the VM multiple times. I used Control Alt Delete and killed VCarve Pro and Aspire a couple of times. But every time I opened that file, it did the same thing. It seemed like it was locked up. And then by accident, I hit the return key. And it turns out that the return key dismisses the dialog and things were good to go. So if you are using that feature of displaying a comment when you open a file and it seems like your VCarve Pro or Aspire is locked up, Hit the return key, and that will dismiss that dialog. I've never seen that problem on Parallels, though. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and move this into full screen. And let's center it. Let's go to 3D view. I mean, just look at this performance. <laughs> this is phenomenal. And we can, of course, you know, like we said before, turn on and off the different features. Let's go ahead and recalculate all the tool paths just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. And it's all done. So as you can see, everything is working fine. I hope that this video, especially some of the parameters in Parallels will help those who are having some problems. And again, feel free to comment in the uh, comment section. I read all the comments and I'm you know, very much interested in helping people get the most out of uh, VCarve Pro and Aspire, and especially on Macintoshes, because that's what I do. Anytime I hear of a little nitty problem that I haven't seen or I'm not familiar with myself, I like to dive in and understand it. Oftentimes, it'll be something environmental, like running another piece of software or not keeping a version of uh, operating system up to date. But, you know, I'll do what I can to try to dive in. Oh, and one last thing. Let's take a look at the Mac OS. And here's my about dialogue, you can see that I am running a MacBook Air with an M2 processor in it, 16 gigs of physical memory, and I'm running Sonoma 14.4.1. Okay, thank you very much. I hope this helps someone out.